Hello everyone, this is Mr. Silvar and this is a AGK which is App Game Kit from thegamecreators.com and I might as well write down that website www.thegamecreators.com and of course this is called App Game Kit Oops. And I am going to be doing some tutorials on how to do this. Well, how to program, publish apps, and the understanding of the app game kit. Now, I've been programming in this for a year now because AGK is practically a year old. I've also been working with the Dark Basic Professional also. Um, I have bought the AGK and I bought the uh, game studio package for Dark Basic and all these other tools and stuff. But for now I'm going to do a thing called Tier 1 AGK programming. Now the difference between Tier 1 and Tier 2 is that the Tier 1 is what I'm doing right now and the Tier 2 is native programming language. If you don't know the difference between the tier 1 and tier 2, well think of it as this. Tier 1 is one universal programming language that you just simply transfer the bytecode, which is where all the machine code is, a file basically. I'll show you that in a second. It's where you transfer it into an interpreter for each device, so whether if it's iPhone or Android or Blackberry. I've never really done BlackBerry, but all I know is that you transfer the bytecode that's generated from this program over to Interpreter, so therefore you could generate your app and sell it or publish it. So right now, our very first program, well, I'm sorry, uh, before we go over the actual programs, we want to go over the actual IDE, which is this. Now, there are projects here. Yes, I do have some projects that I have in the background. But right now, we're going to be working on Tutorial 1. With Tutorial 1, there are mainly two files. The setup.agc and the main.agc. Now, the main.agc is where all of your programming, main programming, is going to go into. All of your loading your images, creating sprites, loading sounds, etc. The setup.agc is just a few variables that you try to set up before you execute the actual app or program. You can set it to full screen or not, set the actual height and width, and set the title bar. For example, if this is the title bar, this is what you would be naming it. For now, let's change this to Tutorial 1, and we will keep the resolutions, and we will keep the full screen to 0. Now, a brief understanding of what the green text mean, means is that the, uh, the green text is, are comments. Comments do not affect the code, the compiler does not see them as anything so they the compiler ignores it if you don't know what a compiler is a compiler is basically a piece of software that converts this code into machine code which therefore the computer understands machine code so your app is executed through the processor and everything like that but I won't get into that too much, with too much detail the set display aspect is uh, whether you want your display to be sideways or square or it's kind of hard to explain like 0 0.66 means that it's going to be a rectangle uh, sort uh, how would I explain this it would be like a rectangle as if you're holding your iPhone right side up if you were to hold it on its side then this would be a 4 divided by 3 aspect ratio it's sort of a bit like uh, HDTVs are sideways and they wouldn't be a 0 0.66 or else your video will be in the very middle of the screen. Again, I will show you this actually in effect sooner or later when I execute an app. But this 
app right here, well it's not technically an app yet, but this program here basically shows hello world on the screen. Now the do and the loop is a main loop. A loop in programming basically um, well it's based on a certain statement would execute this code over and over and over but this is a infinite loop so therefore it will display hello world on the screen by using the the, the print command excuse me um, the print command basically just well it's kind of self-explanatory it prints whatever you put in here on the screen and it could be a variable a number or text like this, which text does require a quotation mark, or two of them, so it's indicated as a string. A string is basically just a collection of characters, which are H-E-L-L-O for hello. Well, just the individual letters are characters, which is a form of uh, variable and a combination of those characters is either a character array or a string as they call it. The sync command is an overall updating system. The sync without it, the app would probably be probably, it wouldn't work first of all. Well I'm not totally for sure if it will or not but you definitely couldn't do any graphics because the sync is required for updating the screen and re-rendering stuff and just for a rule of thumb for now, always include it within your apps and include, include it into your main loop. Now, in order to compile this program, we go over here to the cog, or yeah, cog looking thing, a button, and it'll automatically say compile. So you click that and it compiles for you. And you can just simply press the arrow, which is run. And as you can see, there's a hello world in the corner, and that is it. And from changing the uh, menu or the title of the window, it shows tutorial 1. So that is the first app I was wanting to go over in this video. The second one will be loading a image. Now, I usually name images and tutorials based off of uh, people I know sometimes this time I did it off my friend Truby so let's well it's just a blank square and you'll see it in a moment but the load image command is self-explanatory it kinda just loads an image you have to give each image sprite sound uh, button joystick all those have individual identification numbers these identification numbers are used for uh, let's just say you have many images, you know all the identification numbers of each image, but you only want one of those images to change its size. So we do set image, or yeah, set image, uh, I'm sorry, set sprite size. Since an image is just loading up an image for a reference to create a sprite, basically. Now images can be from, there are different commands for like getting an image from the camera or choosing an image from the library of the device, but we won't get into it at this very moment. The load image, and it should be truby dot, uh, dot png. The load image one truby.png basically just loads the image for reference and then you can create a 2D object which is called a sprite into the actual program. And for the identification number, I gave the truby image identification number number one. And in here, you have to create an ID number for this sprite as 1 and reference the image ID uh, in order to make the sprite look like the image you just loaded. <clears throat> so if we want to reference the actual sprite, sprite 1, 
which is the identification number of the sprite we just created from image Truby. We just, for like if we wanted to uh, position the sprite, we do set sprite position. And in this case, since the resolution is 320 by 480, we just set the sprite position uh, one. We just set the uh, sprite identification number one to pixel, well, a coordinate system x and y based off of pixels, uh, 100 by 100. But before we actually execute this, uh, we want to change the virtual resolution so the image doesn't seem like it's super huge or something like that. So just as a precaution so it doesn't like blow up on the screen of a huge image, we are going to do set a virtual resolution, which we will do the exact same as the setup resolution. So it would be 320 by 480. Now you can always change this virtual resolution and the actual images and stuff on the screen will just appear smaller, smaller, and smaller, and smaller. If you want to actually have the resolution, the actual resolution, not the virtual resolution, equal to the device so it looks nice and crisp, or clean, sorry, or sharp, we basically change the resolution of the setup.agc. So now that we have our sprite all together, we compile it and run, and there's our sprite, a blank box, or a square, I would say, not a box. So now we want to know some form of basic user input. Now I know I'm going a little bit fast here, but it, it kind of seems self-explanatory, but don't worry, at the very end of this tutorial, I'm going to go over what I just taught you so everything would be all clear. So let's just say we want to uh, control the square based on tilting your phone or for a computer in this case is using the arrow keys as a simulation of tilting your phone or mobile device. Now of course you can always use AGK for PC, Mac, and you can also use it for iPhone, Android, Blackberry. Uh, I've even heard that it works with .NET, uh, Pascal, um, and also Playbook. And I know that they are coming out with a new update for uh, Windows Phone, HTML5, and Java. But they didn't do that at the moment. So anyways, back on course we are going to introduce two new things, or well, actually three new things. If get direction x is greater than 0 0.5, then x equals x plus 1. Now this is what you may call an if statement. The if statement basically means that, well, yeah, if the if statement, it basically means that if this statement right here is true, then execute this code right here. Or a better way of doing it is if you have more than one line of code you want to put in there, you can do stuff like this. But you need to have an end if. So you can either write it all horizontal as long as there's only one line of code, or if you have multiple lines of code, you can just simply do it like this, but make sure you have an end if at the end. If you don't have this end if, it's going to basically complain that saying, could not close ne nest, I'm sorry, I'm really bad at talking right now, could not close nest at line 23. So this basically means that you need an end if. But for now, since we're only needing one line code for the actual if statement, we're, we are doing this. And I'm sorry, this is supposed to be within the loop, not outside of it. So the get direction x 
is basically the like if you were to actually tilt your phone right now side to side if you tilt it to the left the variable that this command uh, outputs is based on a, a 0 0.01 to a 1.0 uh, number if it's left is negative if it's right is positive so if you were to tilt your phone all the way to the left on its side it should read a negative 1.0 if you put it all the way to the right on its side it should be a 1.0 if you just tilt it in between all the way on the right and flat then you'll get a number in between 0, 0.0 and 1.0 and same thing for the left but for negative of course, that's if it's completely flat, it'll be 0, 0.0 on X and Y uh, tilt values. So, in this case, if you tilt it more than halfway, it will move the sprite with the actual X variables an increment of 1. The X variables are for turning or for moving the sprite to the right or left while the y variables are up and down. So if we were to tilt the actual phone a little bit to the right, the sprite will move to the right. So if we keep on doing this, get direction x is less than negative 0.5 then x equals x minus 1 and if get direction y is greater than 0 0.5 then y equals y plus 1 and we keep on doing this for here let me just get this Okay, so for the direct get direction y, that is for if you are to tilt your phone all the way up or all the way down. And of course, if you keep it flat, this variable, both these variables are zero. So if you tilt your phone more than halfway down, then the sprite will start moving down. And if you tilt the phone more than halfway up, then the sprite moves upwards. So, so basically what we do is we change the variable or the actual position of the sprite by entering the command set sprite position um, 1x and y. So therefore when we compile and run we can now move the sprite by pressing the arrow keys for the PC and if this were to be a mobile device just simply tilt your phone, Android or whatever. So I thank you very much for watching my AGK tutorial. Uh, make sure to subscribe to my channel and like my videos and don't forget to stop by thegamecreators.com in order to download the program. Thank you for watching. This is Mr. Sovar. Bye.